Hallelujah. Uh, God wants you to know that he loves you. And there's no, there's no condemnation to those who are Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. A lot of times you'll hear things and it might rub the wrong way. All you got to do is turn around and go that way. Amen. So you need to go in the direction of the things of God. We are entering into a, a time in, in this uh, eon, in this age, uh, that no other generation has ever seen. Jesus Christ, I believe, will come back in our lifetime. How many believe that? And he's coming back for a church that's without spout or blemish. We need to be prepared and get ready and get on fire. I don't care what kind of other thing is happening anywhere else. You need to take care of your own life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. One of the things that God is laying on my heart is learning how to speak. It's so powerful that we learn how to speak properly because your words control a lot of what you do. How many, for example, Peter in the Bible tells us that Peter, the apostle Peter, after, after Jesus was, uh, you know, right before he was, cru was crucified, he denied the Lord three times. Peter, as you know, in many situations had a mouth problem. Anybody relate with Peter? Amen. He had a mouth issue. But something happened to Peter that transformed him into a dynamo for the things of God. On the day of Pentecost, and probably before that, he was in the upper room with the other 120 waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, when it came, all of them were baptized in the Holy Spirit and were filled and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now that transformed this mouth problem into a mouth that was right. Because the day that he spoke, 3,000 people got saved. Now, what you need to understand is this. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, how many know what I'm talking here? The baptism of the Holy Spirit will assist and help you get your mouth right. If you don't start saying amen a little more, I'm going to just say, okay, that's it. Hallelujah. This is, we need to react to the things of God. Hallelujah. I said you need to react to the things of God. Now, I'm not just here for a, a pep rally here. I'm here for you to uplift Jesus in your life. Hallelujah. And you need to understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit is important. Speaking in tongues, then, is a vital part of learning and having the ability to control your, 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 your mouth. Hallelujah. How many have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues? Let me see your hands. Okay. If you have not, after the service here, we're going to have a time for those who need or desire this. This is not something that passed away, as some would say. This is not something that went out with the apostles, which some doctrines have misconstrued. There are still apostles today and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. I'm a pastor teacher. There's many apostles in the world that go out and are sent ones to do works of God. There are many prophets that still declare the things of God. And I don't know about you, but I want to get excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want to just sit here and say, ho-hum, we have a nice organization, run nice and, and fine-tune. Hey, let me just tell you, God can do anything in any kind of person if they just let him. You don't have to be intelligent. All you got to be is obedient. That's intelligence. Intelligence is just following God. Stupidity is not following God. And think you can do it all in your own strength or your own way. Well, that's why you are where you are. That's why you are where you are, you are doing. If you follow God, I'll never forget when I, when I started. This is not the message, but that's okay. We'll go with the Lord until that time. i never forget when I started. I was, I was a slow learner. Huh. In college or in high school, I was just so burnt out on drugs, I didn't even know anything. And then God saved me, and all of a sudden, my mind clicked. It just went, and all of like, I just woke up. And here I am, 19, because I stayed back in third grade. Huh. I felt like I woke up. And then I went to Bible college, and in Bible college, I didn't know how to study because I didn't have that kind of habits because I was on drugs in my high school days. What was study? And I remember I had to study. And learn how to study. So it took what people took, what them other uh, took maybe a couple hours. It took me 10 hours. So every day I would just plow into the Word, plow into it, because I was studying the Bible, studying uh, in liberal arts school, but it was a Bible based school. And God began to re educate me and redo. By the time I got out of, high, out of college, I, I, I was a, a, just a B student. 
And I knew the Lord had a higher calling for me to go on and pursue a higher, uh, more learning. So I went on to get my master's degree. And while at that time, then something even clicked more. I felt the spirit of God, the spirit of a teacher came on me. The spirit of teaching came on where I, I felt that I needed a, at that time I thought, well, I'll become a professor in universities and just be able to do that. And that'll be what my calling. But God had other plans. How many of that God has, God has other plans? But on that time, I began to study, and, and it become easier now because the, the habits of studying 10 or plus hours a day outside of classes was now permeating my life. And I began to do that, and, I, and, I, and God began to open up things in my mind because, you know, when you do something on a habitual basis, it becomes a part of you. And that became a part of me to study, to show myself approved in the God, a workman that needs to not be ashamed, rightly dividing the truth. So I just started doing that, pouring myself into the word. I'm talking to somebody here. Some of you right here today feel like you're a loser, feel like you can't make it, feel like you can't go any farther. Well, I'll tell you right now, if he can take me to make me whatever I am today, he can take you. God takes nobodies and makes somebodies out of them. Hallelujah. And then when I went to even on, and I'm so glad I have, I wanted to get my doctors by the age of 30. I thought, nah, well, you know, when we worked hard here at the church, so I didn't really have a lot of time, but I kept on believing and kept on believing, kept on believing. Now, you might think, well, well, with the dipty, you have a doctorate. Well, for me, that was a personal goal. That was a personal desire of my heart. I'm not saying to be bragging like I'm better because I'm not. There's a lot of you that are smarter in a lot of things than I am in all ways, and I acknowledge that. My, my board members are, are the most superior knowledge in business than, than myself, and I listen to them most of the time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know that there are other people smart, but you know what? I, excel, I just excelled in the things of God. That's where I am. Where are you? You need to pursue the things of God. You need to go after God in your life. Hallelujah. And God will show you everything. God will give you everything. Hallelujah. Well, lift your hands if you're like that right now in Jesus' name. Father God, I speak the anointing to come upon each and every one of these individuals that they will, they will grow. They will overcome negative attitudes, negative thinking, negative speaking, negative believing, and they will do what you said, they will become what you said, and they are already, and help that to come forth and manifest itself, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands and say, I received that. I received that. I received that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. We're going to look at a series here, to number three here, learning how to speak correctly. If there's anything, any subject that you've been learning on faith and listening how to, learning how to speak. These are awesome teachings on how to better your life. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18, one of our texts here today. Why don't you read it with me? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat it. Now, the power that gives you direction in your life comes from your tongue. It comes from your mouth and the words you speak and you believe on a constant basis, weekly, monthly, year in, year out, the things you have said all this way. If you look at your life, you are where you are because of how you believe and say. How many here today want to see their life go in a good direction where they see the blessings of God, where they have the joy of the Lord, where they have spiritual strength, protection, health, wealth, long life, a lover of God, a witness for God, flow in the gifts of the Spirit, Flow in the power of God. How am I going to see all of that and more come in your life? Well, you know how it starts? It starts with your mouth. It starts with your heart first, and it goes out of your heart into your mouth because you've got to believe the things of God. Listen to what the Word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 3. The apostle Peter says this. The man who learned how to control his tongue, the man now anointed by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit, being able to be shaped by the Word of God and the Spirit of God, said these things, whoever, hallelujah, for whoever, how many whoever's are here today? That's you. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. Now, a lot of you think that, that would be cursing and, and things of that nature, but that's more than that. Anything contrary to the word of God, it's considered evil by the word of God. Anything contrary by the word of God is considered 
evil by the word of God. Verse 11 says, they must turn from evil, things that are of the world, any kind, any aspect of it, and do the good, which is the word of God. They must seek peace and pursue it, go after it from now on. When you do that from now on, God says, I'll make that which is you desire for my word to come on you. Hallelujah. Now, God wants you to learn how to speak correctly. He wants you to agree with him and his word. So powerful that we do that. We have a lot of problems with people wanting to agree with God and his word. They think they're, well, I can't do that. Well, yes, you can. Hallelujah. You have to do it, though, on a consistent. Everybody say consistent. It's just not a one-time deal. It's speaking from now on. The Bible teaches in Proverbs that a wise man learns how to train his mouth. Because your mouth will direct your life. Biblical confession, then, is, is very important. It's the word homologio, and it actually means, in the Greek, meaning that you agree with and speak something that someone heard, said to you. You agree with it, and you're speaking it. And so here's what you have to understand. The words that you choose consistently will do one, th one of two things. It'll activate God, or it'll activate the devil. God's word will activate him. That's how it is. Now, if you think in our original creation, guess what God gave Adam to do, have dominion over? All the earth. How was he to enforce that? There's only one way that he was able to enforce it. It wasn't by his physical strength, because there was much greater animals than him and size. He only did that by his word. So we need to return to the original state to which we were created for. That is to have dominion by way of words over the things of this world, that we live and reign in Christ Jesus, that we learn how to dominate by the words of God. Now, if we speak God's word, God's activated. But if we speak the devil's word, he is activated in this situation. Even though he doesn't have the power, he is empowered by your lips. We learned also in James chapter 3, verse 2, it talks about a person who is mature. When I'm not talking about how long you've been serving the Lord, because I know a lot of people that have been serving the Lord for a long time that are not mature. Mature is when you got it and you do it, and you're habitually growing in it. As a matter of fact, you can tell because all you're going to do is look at their life. It's a demonstration of what they are. It's a demonstration to where they are. So just look at your life and analyze for your own self. Where you are. If you're not where you want to be, it's your fault. A mature believer, then, speaking rightly, is able to control his body. We can learn how to, matter of fact, our body will start to, it's like programming it. Now, and I know it's hard for you to understand that because you never hear that much talk about this kind of subject. That you can actually program your life, program your body to obey you, to go understand, and we can... And we can walk in the things of God. God wants us to understand the way you dominate or have dominion is by words. When you tell me where else in the Bible that it doesn't say that. It does it through all out. The principles are, are there throughout the whole Bible. And some of you have been using wrong words, and that's why you are where you are. So it's time to start. That doesn't mean you don't have to stay there. The good word is there's freedom and there's liberty, and you can get on the right course here today. Not because of me. If you're depending on me to do what you've got to do, then you're going to lose. If you depend on the church to do that, you're going to lose. Let me just tell you, who dressed you today? I didn't, and I thank God I didn't. Hallelujah. I dressed myself. I brushed my own teeth. I put deodorant on, and everybody said, well, you're going to study to show yourself approved. You have to study to show yourself approved. I said you have to study to show yourself approved. Hallelujah. James then gives an illustration of uh, the small member and that we have in our tongue, and he uses it by way of showing it by way of the horse in the boat. Now, the horse has a bit in his mouth, and you know why it turns? The bit applies pressure to the tongue. It applies pressure to the tongue. Some of you need to learn how to apply pressure to your tongue. You need to learn how to let it speak the right things. Sometimes you need to just tell yourself to just shut up. 
Better to say nothing than say something stupid. And I'm not trying to be condescending here today. I want to see you over in every situation. And we talked about the bit and the rudder. That, that big ship is stared by it. Then we also learn about spiritual law and natural law. You know what I mean? Laws just work. They just work. Whether you like it or not, they just work. Laws work. If I were to walk off this stage, I'm not going to float up. I'm going to float whether I believe that or not. I don't have to believe the law of gravity for it to be an effect in our life. It's going to happen whether I believe it or not. So there's natural laws and there are spiritual laws, and they're going to work whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. Well, you might as well just get in line with the word then and start to use it for your benefit. Hallelujah. The natural laws like gravity, then there's the law of lift that overcomes that law. And there are spiritual laws that will overcome the law of sin and death. And we need to understand that. That's going to be a whole message within itself that God wants me to teach you on how to understand to activate the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's a way to do that. I said there's a way to do that. Hallelujah. We need to understand then the problem is we need to understand why we have this spiritual law. We can have what we consistently say. And you're going to have, whether you like it or not, whether you think or believe me or not, whether you heard this message a thousand times or not, you are going to have what you consistently say. And all you're going to do is look at your life, and that's where you are. And that's the way you're going to stay until you learn how to teach yourself how to talk God's word. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says, Let not this book of the law depart out of your mouth. In other words, learning how to speak this day and night. We haven't got there yet. We're just doing it on Sundays, maybe Wednesdays. And throughout the week, you're speaking all kinds of other junk. I mean, to say this, in the a, in a Tower of Babel, when we saw all those individuals try to make this tower towards the heavens, We've seen this, this Nimrod individual try to gain access into the heavens, and God came down, and, and because their imaginations was constantly on evil, God confused the language. Confused the language. Now, what does that mean? Actually, the word in the Hebrew, we get our, he, our word foddered. Foddered. Not, that's not a Yankee way of saying father. Come on now. It was foddered, meaning... There was, if there was an infilling and, and, and filling in stuff that wasn't really, really good because God knew if he let them go, they would be able to do anything. That's what it says. And what we need to understand, some of our words get confused. We start saying, yeah, I believe, and then some problem comes around and say, you know, well, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Now, words get filled with other junk, and it becomes nothing. You all here today. Now, the problem with most Christians is that they are saying what they have. They are saying the problem. Man, I got a board, and I got a, a staff, and they're good people. But I tell them emphatically, don't bring me the problem. Bring me the problem with a solution. Who wants to hear your problems all the time? Some of, you, some of you are speaking the problem, 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 the problem. Oh, it's getting bad. It's getting worse. It's getting bad. It's getting worse. We're never going to grow. It's never going to happen. We're always going to be this way. Thank God. Hallelujah. God doesn't cuff us in the back of the head when we do that. Hallelujah. Sometimes I wish he would. Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you continually speak the problem, that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. And they are allow, you're allowing them to control your life. Jesus taught this. If you want to change the things in your life and circumstances, don't say what you have and allow that to control your life. Say what you desire, listen, from the word of God. Instead of, of that, uh, the enemy, on a, but you have to do it on a consistent basis. You can't just say it once. Uh, have, you have to reprogram your heart. Just like a computer. If you put junk in, junk comes out. And that's the way some of it is with our life. We've been saying it so long, we get to believe it. Even Adolf Hitler said that. If you could tell a lie long enough, people will eventually believe that. 
But you've got to start saying the truth. And the truth will set you, so the lie will bring you in bondage. Hmm. Hallelujah. We learned that where we get this principle of you can have what you say, it's found in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. There Jesus Christ tells us, Verily I say unto you, that whoever shall say unto this mountain, but mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith, he shall have what he saith. There's three other times that he says it. He says, say three times, and one time says believe. And I will say this to you. You don't have a, time, a problem believing. How many believe in healing? Come on, raise your hand all over this way. How many believe the power of the God? Let me see your hands. You don't have a problem believing. How many believe the Bible is the word of God? Oh, come on. Your problem is you have a problem saying what God says and then doing it. And then doing it. That's, Jesus knew that. He was not trying to be uh, mean or uh, neither am I. You know, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Here's some truth. You have to say three times the more you believe and then do. you got to keep on saying, keep on saying, keep on saying, because you need to understand that as you, you do this, God will set you free. But if you don't, here's what happens. You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. You're going to keep on saying, oh, I'm just never going to make it. I'm never going to get married again. I'll never have this problem. I always have this. And guess what? That's right. That's exactly right. And I'll show you today why that's so much true. You see, the only weapon that Satan has is deception. Deception. Say the only, pr only power that Satan has is what? Deception. Deception. If he, he, it's a, like a big smoke screen. He'll show you that he comes like a roaring, he comes like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. How does he do it? Through your lips. Well, it looks like I'm going to get fired. Everybody else is getting laid off. Looks like I'm gonna, the flu is going around. Everybody's catching it. Everybody's catching it. You ever see how you talk? You ever see how it just comes into your life? And you might, might think that's really funny. I think it's funny. Because we've been so programmed by the world, but we can't even tell the difference. Well, let's look at some other way then here. Let's look at the, the, this principle from a more positive pro aspect on how you can constantly have what you say. The woman with the issue of blood, 12 years sick, 12 years. 12 years. It's 2015 right now. That means two, 2027 from, that, from now to then. That's a long time from now, isn't it? For 12 years, she sought doctors. Nothing wrong with doctors. Doctors are on the same side we are. Thank God. Thank God, except with a pharmaceutical trying to get you on new drugs that they want to push. And that's the truth. She tried all that time. She tried all that time. She tried all that time. She, but she heard about Jesus. Now, a lot of people have this Burger King mentality when they read the Bible. They think it's instantaneous at the time. That, well, the, a few days before she heard. Well, I would say that this woman probably heard of Jesus at least a year before this time. And she start hearing about Jesus. She start hearing about what he did, what he could do, all the miracles. Then she start, some of her friends start, start, became disciples of Jesus. And so she started to think, well, there must be something to this. I've been sick for 12 stinking years, 12 long stinking years. I needed to look at this. And she started to believe. And she said, you know what, if I can just touch him, I'll just be healed. But she didn't say it this that day. I believe she said it several days, weeks, maybe months before that. She kept on saying. Someday, one day, she finally got to where Jesus was. She got enough faith to come where he was. Well, well Pastor, why do I need to go to church? Well, sometimes you need to use your faith to get up and get out of your disp despair and come to the presence of God and show your faith by coming. Well, I can stay home and get this. No, you can't. No, you can't. Oh, pastor, I can't so. Well, you need to, faith goes, doesn't stay. Hallelujah. If what you have, don't ha you don't have it where you are, you need to go get it yourself or have someone bring it to you. Well, she decided, I'm going to go get it. 
And it says this. The Bible teaches us in Mark 5, 28. For she said, if I touch this but the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. Now, the interesting thing here that you don't understand is the word said. It's in the imperfect tense in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in its language, in the grammar. And what it means is that she kept on saying. Now, it wasn't just then that she kept on saying. She was kept on saying then at that time. But prior to that coming that day, maybe even a week before, maybe even two months before, you see, faith has to come before you can get up and go. Because the truth of what that means is this. Sometimes you'll say something and not believe it yet in your heart. And it takes time for you to believe it. There's things that, that you learn how to say. I know there's a lot of times in my life I have desires that I know I don't believe yet. But I know they're godly. And the only way to get a desire in my heart is two, well, two things. You have to speak it out of your mouth and then it plants it in your heart. You keep on speaking it. I know that I'm not 185 pounds yet. But by faith, I am 185 pounds. And my body is going to catch up with my confession. And you're going to see a 185-pound pastor soon. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to make me feel a whole lot better whether you like it or not. Hallelujah. Amen. But you've got to call things that are not as though they were. Hallelujah. And this woman was speaking her faith. She kept on believing. She kept on saying. She kept on doing it. And she kept, she believed right. She was speaking right. And then she acted right. And when she did, she got it. She got it. How many want to get this stuff and not just have a nice service? Oh, that's a nice message. It says this. It says, believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. Listen to the tense. He shall have. It's not yet. But it shall have. When? When it gets in your heart and you start really believing it and start getting it in your heart and really believing it, that's contingent upon you. And you shall have it. Hallelujah. Now, in order to get that desire, you've got to speak it all the time. Now, here's an interesting point. Here's something you really need to know. And I get this all the time by several people. Well, that's just not real. How can I say something that's not here? The situations around you and circumstances can be real. You have financial problems. You have marital problems. You lost a loved one. You have issues in your life physically. They're real. What do you do with the real? What do you do with the real situations that are around you? Well, here's what you have to understand. They're really there. They are really there. We are not Scientologists. You know what that means? They don't believe that anything is real. Hallelujah. There's a neat joke about a person who was a Scientologist on his grave. It said he only believed he was dead. You, when you're dead, you're dead. Things around you are happening right now. How many other things are happening in your life? How many have things in your life right now? Let me see your hands that are happening right now that you need to change. Now, here's what you have to understand. You don't have to be subjected to them. Look at this principle found in Romans chapter 4, verse 17. When I say see, I want to stop for a minute. Well, the way you can kind of break apart a verse, if it's a real long verse, you can put in the end of the verse or the number of 17, you can put A, B, or C, or even D, and that will give you an indication as where it is in the verse. Okay? So whenever you see that, that's what that means. So the latter part of verse 17 says this. It says, call those, read it with me. Call those things which be not as though they were. Now, it's not saying call those things that are, are as though they are not. A lot of people believe that in, uh, in this circle that I'm talking about. That's not the truth at all. The Bible doesn't teach that. Here's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that you do not deny the existence of things or situations, but you deny the right for them to control you. I mean, we have all kinds of problems. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy and the curses, all those curses are going to try to come on you. And you need to learn how to fight and get rid of them before they get there. I mean, all of us are going to have problems. We are not immune to problems. But we do not have to have problems dictate to us. Do you hear me? You have situations right now that are adverse, that are against you. You do not have to stay there. You don't have to stay in that condition. You don't have to be a person that's, that's conditioned by the world. 
The Bible even says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind from the inside out. Are you all here today? Hallelujah. Now, here's the thing you have to understand. This type of situation, as you look at it as it really is, your mouth will put you either over or under. And you got a lot of pressure on you sometimes. You got to learn how to control your emotions. Your emotions sometimes are really squirrely. Did you ever talk to yourself? How many ever have talked to themselves? Come on, let me see. Everybody here? Some of you didn't? Daryl, do you ever talk to yourself? You do? Do you ever answer? Hallelujah. You know what that is? Now listen, I'm going to show you what that is. The Bible tells us that the soul is made up of, of your mind, your will, and your emotions. You have the mind that thinks, rationalizes. You have your emotions that feels. And you have these two things on you, in you. You have your mind saying, you know, if you give, the Bible says, it will be given unto you. And your feelings will say, you know, you're low in your bank account. You know what, what's going to happen? You're going to be under a lot of pressure. And you'll have this conversation within yourself. Actually, it'll be your mind talking to your emotions. That's what it's happening. That's specifically what's happening. Your mind, your thoughts, are talking to your emotions. And a lot of times, you'll have these emotional responses. Man, I just kind of, especially if you involve hurt. And feelings. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Because this goes over in your, your psyche better than a man. Unfortunately, but it's good as well. And you start to feel. And then it's hard because you're, you're more confessing what you feel than what you believe. And when that comes, you have a problem. Because feelings are a part of what realm? Whose? The God of this world. He controls the feeling in the physical realm. And if you continually say, well, I just don't feel like it's happening. I feel like, you know, like just giving it all up. That church stuff, it just doesn't work. I tried that. I don't feel it anymore. I just don't have it anymore. I just don't feel like it. I just, guess what? You're going to have that. Your will decides which way to go. And which side will you agree with? With the word or your emotions? Hallelujah. Now, in the Old Testament, I'm going to tell you a story here. Hallelujah. And I got time. Thank you, Jesus. I got time. Hallelujah. This is a neat story. How many want to become overcomers in their life? Let me see your hands. In the Old Testament, we find this story, this story in Numbers chapter 13. This tells us, and I know you, how many like stories? Let me see your hands if you like stories. This tells us that after the children of Israel reached Kadesh Barnea, which was the, right near the promised land, Moses sends out 12 spies to ch check out Canaan. Canaan is awesome. And he sends out these 12 tribes from the 12 tribes. He picks one from each tribe. And the Bible tells us that 10 of them brought back, listen to what it says, an evil, say it, evil report. An evil report. They came back from the promise. That's Matt, Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. Two of them, how many know who they were? Joshua and Caleb. They brought back a good report. Numbers 13, verse 30. Now, the word evil to us is very powerful. If I were to say to you, Danny, or Danny over here, you're evil. You're evil. I can't even see you, Danny, but I see that you're evil. <laughs> There he is. That would be powerful. That would be really mean. Evil is a powerful word. Evil. Everybody say it again. Evil. These guys gave an evil report. An evil report. Now, what is an evil report? Now, listen to what it is. When God considers an evil report, he defines an evil report as a report of doubt. You know what doubt is? In other words, you don't believe. You don't believe it. God's told you something, and God showed you something, but you choose not to believe it. God calls that kind of thing evil. When God tells you something, how many know that God is not a liar? 
He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that should repent. Hath he not said, he shall not do it? Hath he not spoken, and shall he not make it good? God, when he speaks, is speaking the truth. He can't tell lies. So when you speak contrary to what he tells you, you are speaking evil. An evil report. Hallelujah. An evil report. What's a good report? A good report is a report of faith. God said it, let's go do it. You know, I was talking with one of the bros the other day about how they do something in their life spiritually, and they just says, I don't think about it, I just do it, because if I think about it, I won't do it. Sometimes your thinking will talk, out of your, talk you out of your believing. If you think about it too much, you won't. You won't. You all here today say amen. Hallelujah. Now, understand this. Just because God has told you something doesn't mean you're not going to have a problem. In, in Numbers 13, verse 2, God told Israel, I've given you the land. Wouldn't that be exciting to tell you if God said, I've given you the land? How many would believe that? Let me see your hands. Again, we have no problem believing. We have a problem saying and doing. They believed that. They sure did. But what happened, <laughs> these 10 out of 12 spies came back and they said, it's true. Everything you said is right. There's a land flowing with milk and honey. They, are, they, they even brought back these great clusters of, break, uh, of grapes on their back. They had a pole and they put the, the, grape, uh, the grape cluster on their backs and they were carrying it like this. That's how big the grape clusters were and pomegranates and all kinds of fruit, and they brought it back. But, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mo. Wait a minute, guys. Everybody hear this. There's giants in the land, the Anakims. They're there, these giants. And in our own eyes, we are grasshoppers in their sight. Man, when we look at them, who knows how big they were? Who knows how large they were? Whatever they were, they were bigger than the Israelites. They were tall. They were big. They were strong. And what happened was this. What they were saying is, you know, you know, Mo, we, I know what you're saying. I understand the reports. I understand where we are and we believe in God. But we just can't do this at this time. We just can't do this. We can't do it. And that's what they said. How many have ever said in a situation when God told you to do something, you'd step back and say, you know what, I don't know if I can do that. And you know what happens when you say that? You won't. Sadly to say, look what happened. All of Israel believed that report. All of Israel. Listen, some people believe that the majority report is the right report. And they follow the majority of Christians that say wrong things. And guess what happens? They end up in unbelief. You know what unbelief is? The difference between doubt and unbelief is this. Doubt is saying, I don't believe that at all. Unbelief is, is I, I believe it, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Did you know there's a lot of sin in the church today? It's the sin of unbelief. Did you hear me? Put your hand in your heart and say, Lord, search me to see if there's unbelief in my heart. Because you believe something, but that you're, not, you're just sitting there doing nothing. That's called unbelief. That's called sin. He who knows what to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. That's true. And you need to understand that's holding you back. That's holding back the blessings. Why isn't that happening, Lord? Well, because you're just sitting there with your hands on your, in your pocket doing nothing. You need to go after it. You know, I have to understand if I'm going to get down to 185, I, stop, I need to change the way I, I am eating, and I am, and I need to exercise and drink plenty of water, get a lot of sleep, and all those other things, because it just doesn't happen by itself. In the same way, God says, you're giving you the land, but guess what's in the land? There are giants in the land. God knew there were giants. God knew I needed a glass of water. And tissue, I like to sweat. Hallelujah, looks like I'm doing something. Hallelujah. Praise God for the word of God. And you need to know that because there are going to be problems in your life. 
just because, you know, when we look at the church, when we look at your ministry, it just doesn't come together. When you look at your business, you all have problems in your business? Randy, you have problems in your business? What do you do when you have problems in your business? Stay, oh, shucks. Man, we can't do it. What are you going to do when you have problems in your ministry? Every one of you going to have problems. You're not immune from the problems, but God says you have it. So who are you going to believe? What are you going to do? Here's what happened. They started to believe the wrong thing. The whole, all of Israel, all of Israel, we can't take the land. We can't take the land. They started to take, man, Moses, what a pain in the neck leader he is. We followed him this far. Doggone it. He's going outside of everything, and he started to do his own thing. Who does he think he is? Let me talk to some of you who gossip here in the church. Shame on you. Don't gossip. And I don't mean that meanly. We have a good church. We have a wonderful staff and a wonderful board. We have a good thing. Does that mean we, have, we won't have problems? Sure, we're going to have problems. But when you come with a problem, you better have a solution. Because a problem without a solution is a complaint. A problem without a solution is a complaint. A problem without a solution is a, and that's all you're doing, and that's all you're going to get. Well, they didn't do it. They just kept on doubting, oh, we're not going to get it. The children of God got exactly what they said. They got exactly. They, they believed they couldn't. They said they couldn't, and guess what? They didn't. Matter of fact, for every day that the spies were in the land, how many know how many days they were in the land? Forty days. God said, for every day, you have 40 years in the wilderness. You might have found out why you're in the wilderness right now. You might have found out why it's not happening. Because you're agreeing with the flesh. You're agreeing with the world. You're agreeing with your feelings instead of lining yourself up with the word of God. God said you can have it. You're saying you can't. I don't know about you, but I'm going to believe God. And I'm going to start saying what he says. We haven't come this far because of what we said. We've come this far because of what God said, and we spoke that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we need to understand that, and we need to go after that. You see, you're going to go forward, or you're going to go backwards. That's what the Bible says. It tells us this in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep or guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it, are the issues of life or flows the forces of life. You've got to guard your heart. Your heart is like ground. It doesn't know the difference between bad and good. It doesn't. Listen to this verse. In, in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, a good man out of the good treasures. Everybody say treasures. The word in the Greek is thesauros. You know what word we get? Thesaurus. It becomes a storehouse. Whatever you store in there, what are you storing? How do you store things? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and then in your heart. What you're saying all the time, it stores up stuff. It's a treasure. It's a store place. It's a place, it's a, a place where things are stored. A good man, out of the things he stores in his heart, brings forth good. An evil man, out of the evil things he stored in his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance, out of the abundance of what you're storing in your heart, your mouth is going to indicate where you are. You all get this? And you start to speak it, start speak it, start speak it. You can actually locate a person where they are by what they say. Now, here's the sad part. These ten spies got exactly what they said. They, they died in the wilderness. Forty years, every one of them died. Every one of them. Only two got in. Man, there's a lot of people dying. There's a lot of people dying. Only two got it. Two. Two. Out of millions. Are you all here today? Hallelujah. I don't want to be a part of the millions. I want to be a part of the two. Hallelujah. Here's what happened. Caleb said something. Caleb stilled the people when he came back and said, Mo, let me talk. He said, let's go up at once. Listen to how he talked. 
He had up. He saw the giants. He agreed there were giants. Yeah, there's a problem there. Yes, we see it. I have the solution, Mo. Let's go at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Well able. We can do it. I can do it. Is that lying? No. Why? He's agreeing with what God says. How can you lie by speaking the truth? How can you lie by speaking what God says? Well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. God wants you to call those things that be not as though they were. They're not yet, but they shall be. It's changing. Here's what Joshua said. Joshua Numbers 14, 9. Then Joshua said, do not rebel against the Lord. Do not rebel against the Lord. That's evil. That's evil when you do that. And don't be afraid of the people who live there. We will conquer them easily. The Lord is with us and has defeated the gods who protect them. And so don't be afraid. It's time to rise up, people of God. It's time to get what you say. Joshua and Caleb did not deny there was giants. They were knew there were problems. Listen, there's problems ahead. Look at me. There's problems ahead of you. But don't be afraid. If God be for you, who can be against you? If you've got problems, you say, no problem. My God is well able, and I am well able to go forth. I am well able. to Learn to control your words. Be wise and learn how to control your mouth. Put some pressure on your tongue and start speaking the answer from God's word instead of the problem that so wants to dictate to you. At least one got it. Say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, now listen to this. It's not the giants who are going to defeat you. It's not the storms of life that will defeat you. It's not the devil who's going to defeat you. If you are defeated here today, you have defeated yourself with wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong words. If you think a person is your problem, then you've been duped. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world. And the only way to overcome the spiritual forces that come up against us is this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every wrong thinking, and bringing to captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Here's what I do. I say, Lord, I put my hand on my mouth. And believe me, this is not easy. You've got to practice this. A wise man teaches how, himself how to speak. God will help you. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit too. Hallelujah. No man tames a tongue, but with the help of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, you can. Hallelujah. You start speaking. You start speaking. You start speaking. Let me just end with this. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. You're going to have what you constantly say. The woman with the issue of blood, guess what? She got exactly what she said. Did she not? The children of Israel who accepted the majority evil report got exactly what they said. Joshua and Caleb got exactly what they said. Matter of fact, Let's go ahead now, 40 years from that time. 40 years from that time, Joshua is now leading Israel. And he's now in the land of Canaan. And Joshua's in charge, and he finally gets there, and they're all rejoicing. Caleb, 40 years plus, earlier claimed, listen, he claimed the mountains of the Anakims. He didn't go after just the nice little places. He says, I want where the giants are. I want the mountain. I want that place. And Joshua tried to locate Josh, Caleb by asking him, hey, hey, Caleb, hey, hey, bro, do you still want that mountain? You know there are giants in those mountains. The Anakims are the mountain. And here comes old Caleb. He wasn't with a king. Come on now. He wasn't with a stroller. Thank God for the strollers. But he came up and he said this. You know what, guys? You know what, people of God? 
I'm 85 years old, and I'm still strong. I can still see. I am still well able. Give me that mountain. And bless God, he got up and he did it. Don't let age put negativism on your life. Hallelujah. You can have what you say. You can go forward in the things of God, but you've got to have to start speaking. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Find out what the word of God says. Start staying with it. Listen, every one of us here, if we go with the majority report, hallelujah, whose report shall you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. How many believe the report of God? You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Stand to your feet all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to start looking at your life right this very second. I want you to think where you are. Listen, I am not your God. 